It's a quality of popular spiritual teachings, teachings about this thing called awakening or enlightenment, that there is a, a kind of jargon, a, a lingo, a, a way of using words that has arisen that is very simplistic. And it has this kind of new age kind of gimmick to it, a way of oversimplifying and blurring out all kinds of distinctions and selling people on a kind of pipe dream of spiritual achievement. And sadly, this is this kind of jargon, this kind of semantic gimmick is being done even by many spiritual teachers who claim to be offering something more down to earth, something that is more humane and realistic. And yet they still use this kind of what I would call a black and white, all or nothing, absolutist conception of spiritual maturity. For example, the idea that waking up, becoming conscious, realizing your essential nature, it's going to mean that you have no self, that you have no me. This is another one of their gimmicks. They always use this kind of, they use the personal pronouns of me or mine or I as this very derogatory kind of uh, sense that, that you have this, uh, that to, to use the word self or me means that you're identifying with some very, very limited sense of being. Now, what if someone were to use the word self, myself, or me in a very expansive and open way where that means consciousness, being, spirit, some kind of something that is not reductive, not material, not just mental, but rather that we can understand ourselves our selfhood, our meanness, in a deep and expansive way that I have a connection in being, I have a connection to something unlimited, something divine, that I don't take my psyche to just be a set of ha habitual thoughts and reactions, but rather my psyche is a conscious unfolding, a conscious expression of spirit of all that is. That it is, of course, connected with the psyche and spirit of all others. What if I were to use the word me in that sense? But no, in these popular spiritual teachings, they always frame it as though when you have, they even say, they even discuss it as having a me, a me. Like you have a me inside of you, like it's a little demon or something. And they say that as long as you have a me, then there's going to be fear. You're going to be driven by fear if there's a me in you. So then there's the idea, well, you better get rid of that me. You better get rid of that sense of a personal self or a me. Because by doing so, then you'll be free of fear. You'll have zero fear in you about anything. You'll have zero resistance to life if you have no me. I mean, what does that even mean? This thing that they're calling a me is a sense of personhood, I suppose, which is very normal. It's normal to have a sense of personhood, but we're trying to make it conscious. But I guess what they mean by having a sense of a me in their rather silly language is having a sense of a, a rather a rather primitive sense of I'm just me and I'm all alone and I'm totally separate from others and I'm I'm just my neurotic thinking and uh, I'm just my body and I'm just uh, my social role and I'm just how I appear and look to others. I guess they mean that having a me 
is that. And then if you have that kind of mentality, then that, that me or that ego is fear driven. Well, you're describing what's being described as a me there is something simply a very unconscious sense of self. It's a very uh, rather immature and insular sense of self. And of course, yeah, that, that's fear driven. But as you come into consciousness, as you heal, as you come into intimate rapport with your emotions, with your, with your character structure, with your unique personality type, then a lot of that fear and unconsciousness and struggle gets softened, gets alleviated. And, and this is what we call growing up. This is, a lot of this awakening stuff is a sort of mystification of simply growing up and becoming a more mature person, a conscious adult. So in my, in my conception, it's more like rings of a tree that we grow out of a more, we grow out of that unconscious insular sense of self. And we, uh, we just outgrow fears. And we come into a conscious, luminous wholeness of ourself where a lot of the fears we had in the past are gone, of course. But does that mean we're never going to have any fear of anything that will never, you know, have some kind of, I don't know, unconscious motivation or lurking uh, paranoia or some kind of trace of unconsciousness in us? Of course not. You can be highly conscious and experience very little fear in your life. Uh, you can experience very little aggression or anger, but you're always, there's always going to be a little bit of something in the mind because that's the nature of the mind. Now, in my view, it's just, that's part of being human. But to the extent that you become conscious, you pervade that, you, you sort of transform and embrace and soften all of that with a sense of love, with a sense of courage, with a, with a sense of optimism, a sense of divine humor about you know, the follies of being human that, hey, you know, hey, I have a surgery coming up. Yeah, I'm a little scared, you know, it's good. I have, you know, it's a maybe it's a routine surgery, but hey, you never know something could go wrong. They said there is a small chance of this happening or that. Am I going to have zero fear if I'm enlightened? So I, I really have come, the more I've worked with people, the more I've grown in consciousness and, and after my own shift of awakening, the way I've observed people, I, I really find a lot of these enlightenment teachings to be kind of insulting in how absolutist and oversimplified they are. I've said this in other videos. And I feel like we what we really need is a more kind of organic sense of spiritual growth that we outgrow uh, former modes of unconsciousness and that doesn't mean we're never having anything childish or uh, fearful or a little bit uh, depressive in us or confused. It doesn't mean that we never have that, but that the overall picture has been greatly illuminated and, and uh, uplifted in, in spiritual wisdom and love. That's the approach I'm offering to people. I'd like to get you out of this notion of a one and done uh, total freedom from all selfhood, all humanness, because it's not realistic. It's a disservice to the human experience. Thank you.